You're watching Sitka Community TV. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you see. Sarah, you all set? Yep. All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'll call to order the Tuesday, October 10th, 2023 meeting. Uh, please join me for a flight Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Assembly of the City and Borough of Sitka would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional First People of Sitka. With gratitude, we proceed on Clinket County. Sarah, roll call, please. Mayor Eisenweiss? Present. Mr. Mosier? Here. Ms. Duncan? Here. Mr. Christensen? Here. Mr. Yesat? Here. Ms. Carlson? Here. And Ms. Mr. Pike? Here. Are there any uh, correspondence or agenda changes this evening? Uh, seeing none, that would bring us to special reports. Uh, we do have a scheduled special report this evening. Um, from the Sitka Sound Science Center um, about summer programs and uh, the partnership between the Science Center and uh, Parks and Rec. Um, Janet, I understand, is here to present. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I am Janet Clark. I'm the Education Director at the Sick Sound Science Center. And today I want to talk about this unique partnership between nonprofits and a, um, thank you, thank you, and a city department that has resulted in remarkable benefits to our community. A little more than a year ago, Barb Morris came to me and she said, I've heard about this grant, but it's really short turnaround. It gets announced, it gets opened on September 1st, and you have to have it in by the 25th. And I was thinking about you because the Science Center is a little bit nimble. We can move a little faster than some departments and agencies can. So we did a lot of talking together, did a lot of interviewing of local leaders and idea makers, and finally we wrote up the grant, Sickle Sound Science Center wrote up and submitted the grant, and we were awarded it. And we call this grant the ACIT grant. It's to the Ala state of Alaska Department of Education and Early Development. And it was for summer programming, two years of it. This one we just passed and the next year as well. We called it ACIT as a way to, um, to, to commit to the goals of the grant. And that is A for adventurous and fun programming, C for culture and community, E for engineering, because the design process is, is woven into lots of things we do. And then the I and the T is some very intentional instruction and training for the educators that work with, with this grant. And our goals included increasing the number of participants in summer programs, and also increasing the number of offerings of summer programs also, hiring high school English language learners as summer program assistants, and intentionally then giving educational uh, experiences and growing the leadership of all of us as educators and the young adults that uh, worked with us. Well, we exceeded in all of those goals. And it, uh, we increased the number of youth that, um, that, that we had written as kind of what I would say low metrics now that I look at it. Barb tells me that in the Parks and Rec alone, they had over 600 registrants for programs in the summer. Our programs, our camps at the Sickest Sound Science Center were full on every single one. There were waiting lists on all of them. We had the ability to look at our demographics and they reflected our community. And this was important to us because we had, we had noticed that our, that our demographics were skewed. And with Parks and Rec's efforts in recruitment and open, uh, open programs, our demographic, demographics did reflect what our community is. 
The community was wowed by these high interest and diverse camps and events. And, um, and, and this richness of, uh, of looking at the world was really something that both Barb and I had shared values on. In addition to that, we were responsive to community interests. Barb held many planning programs in the community, and we found out that what they wanted was preschool programming. They wanted gymnastics. They wanted art. They wanted to have career exploration. And they definitely wanted to be outdoors, outdoor exploration and, I, and, and possibilities there. And so that's what we did. We delivered. We did all of these things. And what the survey results that Barb put out, and also the Sick Sound Science Center, overwhelmingly positive. They loved the programming. The other thing that was across the board the same in all of our survey results is that they wanted more. They said, we want gymnastics all year round. We want you at the Science Center to have more camps. Our kids just want summer camps all the time. And I can't believe what a, what a tribute that is to the work that we've done in putting together those camp programs. Because of this funding, it provides really quality instruction. We're able to pay for stipends for instructors. So instead of asking somebody to volunteer a week of their time to do aviation science with kids, we could pay a stipend for it. Additionally, kids got to work with really quality materials, and they ate very well very healthy snacks throughout each one of the camps. Um, in this case then, the other thing is the proudest moments, I think, was with our ability to hire our English language learners, high schoolers. Barb and I spent quite a few hours at the high school. And Betty Richter had said to us when Barb went to her and said, what can we do to involve your English language learners in camps? And she said, hire them, give them jobs. And so we did, and we, they applied, we went through a, a process with, of interviewing, hired them, and we had outstanding, exceptional kids throughout the summer who got to do camp experiences, but also they were, um, in, they were exposed to training, first aid training, child development training. They were able to learn what it was like to plan a program and to implement it. And in general, they learned leadership skills. And this was one of the best things that we had done in this grant. We also had the ability to include both AmeriCorps and um, Jesuit Volunteer Northwest um, young adults who were finished out their service hours with us in the summer. So we had all of these young adults working together with summer programming. One of the things that the um, Youth Advocates of Sitka did for us was they taught a brown bag series on this leading with care, a trauma-informed education for all of us educators and the young people that I just talked about. <clears throat> Partnerships are both the foundation of this program and we feel like the future of it. And I really want to thank Barb and Drew Roseman and all the people that made the Parks and Rec's vision a reality. And I also want to say congratulations. What an incredible first summer for Parks and Recreation. It's, it should be something that the city is very, very proud of. And I, myself, am so proud to have been a part of it. And I really enjoyed every bit of this summer and plan to do the same for the next one. I want to hand it over to Barb. She has just a couple of words on it also. Barb Morris, Parks and Rec. And you know, I just want to say it has really been um, just so great working with the Science Center that it's been a partnership that's really allowed us to offer so many programs and activities for the community. You know, we couldn't have done what we did as far as the breadth of programs and the quality of programs without the additional resources from the grant. And working with Janet and Lisa at the Science Center has been great. Um, I think that. Um, you know, because it will be another year, we'll be even have even better and more programs next year. And I know that you, as the assembly, back in spring of 2022, when Parks and Rec, when Community Recreation Initiative came to you and said, you know, um, fund this Parks and Rec, part of what you said was bring in additional resources. And, you know, we definitely took that seriously. And that this has just certainly been probably, I mean, I think we brought in 
around two, a couple hundred thousand dollars. But this has been the biggest piece of it, is working with the Science Center, this grant, and the one that we have during the school year with them that continue some of these programs. So, you know, I really appreciate their leadership and willingness to work with us because it has definitely benefited, you know, the community. Well, thank you. I had uh, an idea of some of the programs that had happened this summer, but no idea to the, the scope and scale. Um, what an epically amazing summer for, for our first summer. So um, thank you both very much for, for doing that and to continuing to do it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Continuing on with special reports tonight, is there anyone for government to government? Municipal boards, commissions, committees? Municipal departments? School district? Students and guests? Uh, seeing none, that'll bring us to persons to be heard. This is public participation for any item off of tonight's agenda, not to exceed three minutes. Sorry, I'm always curious about numbers, how much was a grant, and how long uh, will it last. But uh, your time's up, so um, you'll have to, we'll have to talk later. Um, one thing I'd like to do, since these special reports are so good, um, I'd like the assembly to ask Matt Donahoe back for an update on the fisheries. And I think that uh, five minutes would be well spent uh, with Matt. Uh, because a lot of things are happening in their own way, and it's important uh, that uh, we, in watch, we watch this investment for Sitka. Now, um, it is good to see the assembly here, and um, one of the things that I see is that how you spend your own money, you can do it any way you want. If you earned it honestly, have fun, enjoy, be generous. But when you sit on the assembly, you have a higher order of diligence, due diligence, when you're spending other people's money. You just can't bring your opinion to the table. You have to do the work. You have to do due diligence. And any member who comes here who really didn't do that due diligence, maybe they should, I know you're not allowed to abstain, but take a bathroom break instead of voting on something, you really have potentially no idea except your feelings. Uh, we know that the um, United States government is spending us into oblivion, and uh, it will affect us here in Sitka. It will affect us through inflation. Yes, inflation is up no matter what anyone says, substantially. I invite you to look at the economic reports, supply chain issues, and oil prices. Since we depend on everything for our fossil fuels, look at the 8% mortgage. Talk about affordability. What are you going to do about an 8% mortgage? You can't do too much. So the important thing here is, is that you need to focus on how we're spending money here in Sitka and how well it is thought out because I think that Sitka is pretty leveraged at this moment and we need to do what's important for Sitka. Anyone else for persons to be heard this evening? Good evening, my name is Austin Cranford, uh, Mayor Assembly. I would like to congratulate the winners of the election. Hopefully they will continue to serve this community well. 
Uh, I came here today regarding a couple of articles that were in the newspaper yesterday, uh, specifically that about 80% of our students cannot read uh, sufficient, uh, sufficiently, yet we're spending millions and millions of dollars on the school district. I would like the assembly to look into why that is. Uh, a lawsuit was also dropped last week against the city. I would like to see why this information just now came to light to the public and why it wasn't dealt with before it got to this point. And then there's the GPIP issue, but that's on the, uh, on the system today. So uh, outside of that, we have noticed through records requests that at least as far back as 2016, the city has been in violation of state law. Uh, and there are now reports that everything from funding to appropriations to purchasing items and equipment might also be in violation of state or federal law. I would like the city to contact each city department <coughs> to figure out where exactly all of this money is supposed to be going. I personally will, will be requesting the records of every city's uh, department's budget along with what specifically was spent. And I actually have in my possession all of the assembly financial disclosures. And uh, while I'm not interested in what's on it, I would be interested to see what's not on it. I noticed that none of the assembly members allegedly hold stock in any company. Thank you. Anyone else for persons to be heard this evening? Seeing them, that will bring us to consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda consisting of item A, approve the minutes of the September 12th and September 26th Sunday meetings. Second. There's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Is there any public comment? Sarah, on the consent agenda. All right, on the motion to approve uh, the minutes, Mayor Eisenbeis? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Mr. Yestad? Yes. Mr. Mosier? Yes. Ms. Duncan? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. And Mr. Pike? Yes. The motion passes uh, 7 0 on item A. That will bring us to unfinished business of tonight. Um, item B, please. I move to formally accept the certificate of election for the October 3, 2023 regular municipal election according to the results set forth in the attached election certification prepared by the municipal clerk and request that the official tally be included in the minutes as part of the permanent record. Second. Okay. I've been moved and seconded to approve the certificate of election. Is there any public comment? <clears throat> Good evening, Richard Wayne. Um, all elections are big deals. And I know in Sitka, uh, we have the individual who is the most knowledgeable about the elections, um, Sarah Peterson. And I know she takes it very seriously. And I certainly want to thank her very much for all the work that she does in putting these things um, out and uh, just making them seem, I'll say, seamless in a very complicated kind of world. Um, and so I know you're going to recognize it, but I am always a person who prefers paper ballots. There are only 1,600 of them, same day, uh, IDs, and no machines. I wish they'd get rid of them. Uh, certainly here in Sitka, we have no use. So again, thank you, Sarah, for, for the uh, work that you do. And also, I can't forget um, Jessica who is out there since I know that uh, she does a lot. I'm sorry, um, I was neglect. So thank you very much. Is there any other public comment? Back to the Assembly for deliberation. Just real quick, I want to say I appreciate Sarah. I love the way we had it, the email, same night, everything, and then the new rules allowing it, the the uh, early voting to be counted that same night was nice, and thanks for bringing that forth, Sarah. And, you know, easy, and I appreciate it. And it's 
it's uh, always nice to get to one more case. Thank you. Well, it's nice until you see the email at Central 11 p.m. But uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit late. I mean, not not a little bit late. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I just about got myself in trouble with Sarah. <laughs> that would have ended my career up here. Um, <laughs> you were up very late in order to get all of that accomplished. Thank you. Uh, on item B, please. All right, on the motion to approve the certificate of election, Mr. Yestad? Yes. Mayor Eisenbeis? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. Mr. Mosier? Yes. Mr. Pike? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Yes. And Ms. Duncan? Yes. The motion passes 7 0 on item B. Okay, Crystal voted in favor, so it's almost like she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so at this point, um, we are going to recognize the House uh, Assembly member, um, Crystal Duncan, and then we'll have a short recess. There are some cupcakes in the back, and uh, I'm sure she'll stay long enough to um, say goodbye to everybody up here. Um, we will definitely miss her up here. Uh, one of the things that I, I recognized recently for Crystal um, was her, her steadfast approach to uh, the strategic plan and keeping the assembly on track on the strategic plan and, and linking every single item back to that. And that just reminded me that when I was looking at items, you know, that was the plan that we had put out there um, that we needed to follow. And so how can, how can we link that back as well? Um, Crystal also brought a voice um, of inclusion. Uh, Crystal wanted to make sure everyone had uh, their voices heard and included at this table. And I think that's massively important. So uh, Crystal, I just want to say thank you um, for your time here. Uh, it's amazing how quick and long three years can be all at the same time. Um, so we, we do appreciate your service. And I know this isn't the, the last time um, that we'll, we'll see you. Um, your, your service throughout the community will continue. So I do thank you. Um, we have a service award here for, for Crystal Duncan. On behalf of the citizens of Sitka, we hereby express our sincere appreciation to Crystal Duncan for her diligence, dedication, and community service during her tenure as assembly member serving the city and borough of Sitka from 2020 to 2023. So, thank you very much. Um, to so everyone can say hi and bye, and uh, there are cupcakes in the back, which is my favorite part of this evening. Let's eat. <coughs> Let's see.
Well, welcome, Scott. Thank you for uh, for joining us. Uh, I'm sure you'll find uh, proceeding actions to be most entertaining. <laughs> Uh, no, we, we really do appreciate you, uh, you um, being with us. Um, look forward to hearing your perspectives and point of views. I know when we've had um, conversations on the side, um, you normally always enlighten me uh, to something that's happened in the past or previously in town that uh, they can change my perspective for the better. So uh, excited to hear it, excited to work with you, and uh, we'll, we'll keep charging through our agendas. Thank you very much. Uh, it'll bring us to item E this evening. I move to reappoint Gail Roderick to a three-year term on the Police and Fire Commission. Car uh, Carol Addicts. Addicts a two to three-year term on the Animal Hearing Board and appoint Justin Peeler to an unexpired term on the Port Santa Harbor Commission and Adam Porton to a three-year term on the Local Emergency Planning Committee in Kettero to Law Enforcement, Civil Defense, Firefighting, First Aid, Local Environment, Hospital and Transportation personnel. Second. I so moved and seconded to reappoint and appoint uh, the named individuals. Is there any public comment? Good evening, my name is Richard Green. I am up here today to speak of the appointments and reappointments. I think each of the individuals that we are presented here with tonight are, are really uh, experienced and outstanding individuals. Uh, some of them I don't know as well. Uh, Gail Roderick is a, a gem, and congratulations that she's going to be reappointed to police and fire. Uh, Karen Addicts um, is uh, very intelligent, articulate, um, and um, just very knowledgeable about many things. And actually, I think she would do well to be sitting at the assembly. Uh, but she has chosen the Animal Hearing Board, and I'm sure some of you agree that it might be um, fairly similar. Um, also, uh, Justin uh, Peeler uh, is an experienced um, individual, and it looks as though um, he, um, uh, he has his un unexpired uh, term uh, that he will be filling, and Adam Horton is getting a three-year term on the uh, local emergency planning committee uh, under law enforcement um, and uh, other types of categories. What's important is that um, he has a great deal of experience in emergency management and has been here since 2012. And it states that he's an aircraft firefighter. So I presume that he's the one in the, in the um, parades that drives that big freaking truck and if he ever wants, uh, you know, company in that big truck, I'll be happy to join him at the next parade. But congratulations to all and anyone who wishes to uh, pursue uh, civil um, civil duty. It is uh, a wonderful thing. So thank you. Is there any other comment on the appointment or reappointments? Uh, the assembly board deliberation. Sarah? On the motion for the, uh, to approve the appointments and reappointments, Mayor Eisenbeis? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Mr. Yesta? Yes. Mr. Moser? Yes. Mr. Saline? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. And Mr. Pike? Yes. The motion passes 7 0 on item E. That brings us to item F. I move to approve Ordinance 2023-21 on authorizing the purchase by the City and Borough of Sitka, CVS, of Lot 4, Block 4 of the Gary Paxson Industrial Park, pursuant to the aff affirmative covenant of right to purchase contained in the quick claim deed recorded 8-15-22 and making supplemental appropriation for fiscal year 2024 for said purchase, purchase of 4690 Creek Road, property by CVS. Second. I was removed in segment, John, you have an introduction for this item? I do, Mayor, thank you. I'll, I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. 
Um, so for the history, I'm going to start with uh, when this subject property, which is block four, block four, lot four of GPIP or 4690 Sawmill Creek. Uh, I'm going to start with the history when it became the North Lion Seafoods building. Uh, and that began in July 11th of 2017, in which the assembly approved a lease by a seven to nothing vote um, to lease the building to, uh, at the time, North Lion Seafoods. Um, and the terms of that lease, uh, it was a five-year term, but in it, it said the lessee is hereby granted an option to purchase the subject property at the end of the term at the 2014 appraised value of $554,000 under two conditions. One of them is that there was no continuing material default under the lease and that the lessee was employing four positions at the Gary Paxton Industrial Park facility for which gross wages are paid that are equal to or greater than $36,000 per calendar year for each employee and they had to be shown on the tax records. So um, later, uh, it was December 6, 2021, um, the, there was a consent of assignment to the lease from North Line Seafoods to SIAC Logistics. Um, that consent of assignment uh, assigned the lease with all the rights, titles, interests, and obligations and liabilities to SIAC, which means they still had that, that same option that Northline had. Um, it was in March of 22 that SIAC gave notice to the city and borough that they would like to exercise that option. Um, and we checked for compliance under the terms that I, I uh, just discussed. Uh, they were compliant. Uh, they showed the uh, the, or the uh, uh, tax records as required, and uh, we moved forward with that sale. As part of that sale, uh, the lessees purchased, uh, they had to grant a permanent non-exclusive easement to the lesser for access to the adjacent waterfront tidelands, and in the uh, easement they had to do that at their own expense, and they had to give us uh, first right of refusal if they were to ever try to resell the property. Um, it was on uh, August 22nd of this year that SIAC Logistics informed me that they would like to uh, explore selling that property. Shortly after that, uh, I approached the assembly and kind of walked through the what the quick claim deed says, the timelines and how it works, and uh, I was informed to move ahead and explore the option to repurchase this property under the terms of the quick claim deed, which basically says um, we go get an appraisal and whatever the value of that appraisal is, that's the purchase price of the property. Um, if SIAC then wants to um, challenge that appraisal, they can go get their own. Uh, they just have to notify us within 10 days. And if they get an appraisal and it's different from ours, we take the average of the two, and that's the sale price of the property. So I've moved forward with that as directed. We got the appraisal. The value came back at $1.3 million for the property. And in front of you is a supplemental appropriation uh, with the funds listed uh, in the memo to total the 1.3 million. Um, and by approving this appropriation, uh, the assembly would be directing me to complete the repurchase of that property. Uh, thank you. I'm sure we'll have some questions um, later in the process. Is there any public comment on uh, item F? Good afternoon or evening. Uh, my name is Richard Queen. I will have the first part of my testimony uh, tonight as being uh, what my testimony was on December 14th, uh, 2021, when the uh, transfer from North Line uh, to SAEC occurred. Richard Queen. Richard Queen. I, uh, I remember when North Line came and wanted to do building and do their barge thing, and I thought it was a great idea and uh, I wish them luck and continue to do so. Um, salmon shares came along and it was uh, another great idea and I'm glad that um, when Northline changed their business model here in Sitka, I'm very happy that uh, Sitka Salmon shares came over and kind of picked up the ball on that property. Um, my notion is, and uh, you'll excuse me in reading this and I don't know whether it's possible, but this is now a new use. When the original stuff was for Northline, uh, they were going to be doing barge reholes and builds and so forth. And now this is new use uh, with kind of, in quotes, a new uh, lease individual. Part of the thing that I picked up on, of course, and I remember it from prior, is that um, the lease was leased to buy. 
and that is critical um, real estate down there. And um, it, it could be that the assignment of that lease um, could potentially just maintain the lease and remove the the buy portion and allow it to remain uh, to Sitka because you never know what the future is. And I keep saying that with the buildings and so forth. It was assessed at um, uh, 554000 which was, uh, I guess, uh, valued in 2017. Um, this is now four years after. What is the value of it now? What will the value of it be in the future if we have a hole out there? And let's just say something happens to uh, the ocean environment and things happen to uh, Sitka salmon shares. I'd still like to see the city have um, the ability to have that property revert um, in, in critical um, uh, portage area. And uh, so if it's possible, um, please consider um, keeping it as a lease. God bless them. May they uh, be, have prosperity and be fruitful and multiply. It sounds like with 100 employees, they did multiply. But the key here is always keep the property. And if we have an opportunity to keep the property, then let's do it. Um, otherwise, um, you need to reevaluate how the property is assessed before um, it is given to to another party. So uh, please try to think out of the bo box, but think Sitka. Think about Sitka, its infrastructure, its ownership of properties, uh, especially down at uh, GPIP. So I, I know probably some of the things I'm saying are not making people happy, but um, it has to be a Sitka state of mind with all of these deals. Thank you. Any other comments on uh, for London? I have to tell you, there was no deliberation on this. This was in 2021. We had the opportunity with the lease to keep it, and now we are paying an extraordinary uh, premium, uh, which actually, if you follow the corporate stuff with SEAC, uh, might even be somewhat of a flip, and uh, not right. Any other public comment on Ordinance 23-21? Yeah, Ken Mark out here. Um, I too have to question the history of that decision to maintain that um, right to purchase and the reassignment of that lease, and particularly understanding that there was no assembly debate at the time. Wonder, um, you know, the kind of lessons we we could take home from. And it's not, I don't think it's the first time that similar, I don't know, you, you maybe question the, the uh, leadership of the GPIP enterprise. Anyway, it's very disappointing to, to have something like this happen. Thank you. Any further public comment? <coughs> Good afternoon, Austin Cranford. I just wanted to reiterate partly what uh, Dr. Wing mentioned. In 2014, if the property was worth uh, just say half a million dollars, uh, after inflation, that should be about 700 grand in today's money. So how are we now paying $1.3 million for a property uh, that is quite a bit over inflation. That's about 600 grand, if I'm asked correct, over what it should be worth according to my calculations. Was the appraisal done incorrectly by the city? Was the appraisal done incorrectly by the company? Uh, I'd like the city to look into that. Thank you. Any other public comment? I see none, we'll bring it back to the assembly. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously this isn't a surprise. We mentioned earlier we had the uh, executive session where we talked about this, but um, I think there's a couple of points that need to be made. Is first of all, uh, you know, the North Line had the right to transfer the lease, and it's an asset that they can transfer. So we didn't have a whole lot of choice there. Uh, but second, there's been a number of improvements done in this building over the years. Uh, you know, we talked about there's a transformer and there's uh, a big hot water heater. Um, and so this building will be an asset for the haul out. There's a number of things that are in that building that we were going to have to buy anyway. Um, 
like that transformer, like the hot water heater to keep the ice uh, the pad uh, from icing up. Um, so, um, you know, in a, in a perfect world, it'd be nice to uh, have left the have have that land still in our back pocket. On the other hand, we received approximately nine hundred thousand um, dollars in revenue from that uh, between leases and sales. Um, and at the same time, there's been, like I say, a number of improvements to that land. And of course, land is worth more now. So I, I really don't have a problem with this too much that um, looking forward, it's going to be extremely useful for the hollow. And we have space there that we can lease uh, in smaller amounts to uh, people who are doing work for the haul out, you know, uh, the you know, people at shipwrights or diesel mechanics or whatever, um, as well as some of the infrastructure that's there that we now don't have to get. So, um, you know, is it uh, is it perfect? No, but it it definitely is something that we're not coming out too bad about this. I think, say, especially when you consider all the there's a reason why the, the building is worth assessed more besides just inflation. There's a number of, a, quite a bit of work that's been done to it. So, I will be one of yes. Chris? Kind of tagging along with what Tor was mentioning there. Um, I think it needs to be pointed out, the city was given this building. Um, it was originally constructed you know, by the boat company or whatever. And um, the, the city ended up getting it. And it was a bit of a shell at the time. Uh, the city put in some money to finish out the project. And like Tor was mentioning, um, lots of improvements were thrown at this building to increase its value um, from that 2014 or 2017 valuation. Um, offices, bathrooms, a big boiler that just so happens to be able to work with this washdown pad. Um, I think what's really important here is that this is going to be a pretty integral part of our haul out that we're trying to do. Um, it's centrally located within the haul out section area. Um, it's going to be right next to the washdown pad, which is a great spot for offices and, you know, that boiler, which is going to be convenient for our heated washdown pad. <clears throat> and <laughs> in the end, uh, we still, if we didn't decide to go through with this purchase, we still need to build some sort of office, bathroom, boiler facility, which in our projections is $770,000 for a little tiny building. Yes, we're spending more here, but we are also going to have some facilities to be able to rent out to tradesmen and start making some of that money back. And it is in prime location, so I think should command a premium lease rate. So I, I think in the end, though we're spending money, We'll see it come back. So I'm definitely for this. Tim? Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, it's interesting. The GPIP group was just here explaining the whole haul out um, plan. And prior to this building becoming available, and I remember looking at the map, and, and even there was even a comment about why is this building like right where we want the offices to be and, and things like that. So. And like you guys have already, you have already explained, um, this, this brings a lot of the things that they were staging for later in this process um, to getting this haul out to where we want to be. And I mean, this haul out is crucial to Sitka's maritime uh, work, and I think um, this building meets many of those things. It's almost as, it was pur as if it was purpose built for what we were interested in, in the place we were interested in having it. So. Um, I get that past assemblies make interesting decisions, but um, at this point in time, uh, this is the decision that's in front of us, and I think this is the, the way to go forward. This meets the needs, and it looks like the funding sources have to make sense. And I will also be in support of this. Scott? Did uh, we put in the transformer for the enterprise fund, or did they put in the transformer? Uh, John, I think that'd be one for you, but I believe that was uh, put in by Sandwich Shares. Correct. Thank you. 
Okay. Just say um, I, there's nothing else brilliant for me to say. I think uh, I agree with everything that's been said. It does look like a bit of a uh, sticker shot, but when you take all these other things into consideration, I think it's going to be a, a long-term win for all these things. A lot of what I had wanted to say has already been covered too, so I'll make that brief. Um, the, the assembly's already um, heard it, but you know, if uh, um, there are substantial tenant improvements on the property, uh, which increase the valuation, I am excited to see $700,000 of the purchase price coming out of the bulk water fund. Uh, it's been a large pot of money. Um, money's never free, but essentially free money, where it's it's sat in um, an account for quite some time, and now we're actually getting to utilize it for, I, I believe, a necessary um, need. Um, this is one of the times where a loan from the Southeast Economic Development Fund excites me. I think we've nickel and dimed that fund down to nothing, where I was kind of trying to hold it as, as a whole for a large project, such as a haul out. Um, so there's a, a substantial amount, $350,000 coming from that as well. Um, one thing I'd like uh, to, to remind the assembly is if we don't buy this building, someone else will. I don't know if there's a line, but I'm sure that there's a line of people behind us ready to buy this building. And then we lose control over a, a key um, entity within our haul out. Um, and we don't know if that's going to be beneficial or detrimental to our, our purpose and our causes. So I believe that that weighs in. Um, it's already been mentioned that we'll need to build a building similar to this anyway for, um, for the use. It's, it's already been planned out. And then uh, finally, this kind of just comes to a no win. Um, you know, people um, on one hand will say, well, why doesn't the city get rid of land? Why doesn't the city give land um, out to homeowners or uh, businesses so that they can try? Um, but then we're told that, no, don't give away city land. You need to keep all your city land. Um, so it's kind of one of those, like, you know, we, we gave a business an opportunity to try and their business model has shifted. Um, and so now we're, we're jumping back in. But it's kind of a, kind of a no-win there. Do you, do you keep it or, or, or hold it? So. Anything further from the assembly? Sarah? Writing on a motion to approve ordinance 2023-21 on first reading. Mr. Christensen? Yes. Mr. Yestad? Yes. Mr. Saline? Yes. Mayor Eisenbeis? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. Mr. Moser? Yes. And Mr. Pike? Yes. Okay, the motion passes 7-0 on first reading. Uh, thank you. That would bring us to our uh, Deputy Mayor, Vice Deputy Mayor, and Assembly Liaison assignments this evening. Uh, the liaison is always a fun one, so I hope everybody has lots of free time and is available to raise their hands for those. Um, but we will start with Deputy Mayor. Um, I'll start that one off by saying uh, Kevin Mosier has, has stood in for me several times, not only leading the meetings, um, but then attending events where I've been unable to, and I've been extremely happy to have him as my right-hand man. Um, so, and, and you're actually sitting on my right, so that works out really well. Um, uh, I've been extremely happy with him as, uh, as deputy mayor, so I'm, I'm not going to nominate, but I'm going to say that, uh, that I have enjoyed having him there and would be um, pleased if he would be able to continue in that role. If uh, you're so inclined, don't make that motion. I am. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Okay, I'll make the motion to have um, Mr. Moser as our deputy mayor. Are there any other nominations for deputy mayor? I see none. Um, Kevin, congratulations. You are the deputy mayor again. Thank you. Uh, bring us to vice deputy mayor. Um, this is a role that switched back and forth for a little bit. Um, Crystal Duncan was uh, Vice Deputy Mayor previously. Um, I'm gonna, since I have the microphone, um, I'm gonna throw out um, a nomination this time. Um, and uh, this would be a person that I'd be honored to serve with um, because they, um, they were a, a role model for me growing up. Um, you know, I, I took metal shop classes from, from Tim Pike, and uh, you know, there's, there's a couple things that, uh, that he said that stood out with me, and I guess I did learn a, a thing or two. Probably a couple things that I said that stood out to him as well. Um, but uh, um, I, I think he'd be 
be great to have uh, the calm, guiding voice of, of Tim Pike as our, our vice deputy mayor. So I nominate Tim Pike. Any other nominations? Tim, you can refuse, but <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Um, I understand you have a busy school schedule as well, so we'll try not to put too much on you that interferes with that. Um, and then uh, liaisons. So um, typically we've just started at the very top and just worked our way down so that Sarah can keep track of all this as well because um, there are quite a few different roles. Um, you're welcome to keep your role as a liaison. Um, you're welcome to switch it up as well um, depending on your availability and your, your expertise. So um, the first one that we would need is uh, the Erie Paxton Industrial Park Board liaison. I'm currently a staff in Christensen. I'd like to keep it if I could. Okay. Yeah, there's no objections, actually. Um, I'm, I'm assuming no one's going to oppose any of these, um, but if anyone does, as we go down, um, have a, a, a burning desire to get on those, just please let me know. Um, uh, health needs, human services um, was Duncan and Mosier, um, so we'll need a primary, um, and then if Kevin wants to continue as primary, or I'll turn it on that one, whichever. I can continue with a second. Okay. I could maybe do first if um, something lower down um, can get switched out. So I'll say yes now. Okay. okay. We, we can revisit too. They're not like we can revisit as we go down the list here, most definitely. Yes. Uh, historic preservation. Right now it is Carlson Christensen. Well, I think if JJ is going to take health needs, uh, as a familiarity with that group. And to, mm -hmm. I have some familiarity with historic preservation as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll go over wherever you guys want me to go. JJ, Crystal's you. library deal too. If, or I think that's cutting in front. Oh, okay. um, yeah. No, that's good to know though. Um, JJ, um, primary or secondary? Do you want to discuss, would you prefer to be the primary or the alternate for that one for historic preservation? And there'll be alternate. I'm kind of stretched. Okay. All right. I'll take my Okay. Sorry, Scott. I didn't mean to put you a little bit. I had to put you on the spot, but not, not bad. Yeah. All right. So, Scott, you're going to be alternate for alternate. the start? Okay. Um, investment committee is Christensen and Eisenweiss. Um, I'm happy to be alternate to that one again. And I'm, and not, I'm happy to continue on that. So, please don't miss any of the meetings. <laughs> Which one? Uh, library was uh, Crystal, and Scott, you said you'd be interested in that one? Yes. Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, local emergency planning uh, was Mosier and Duncan. I can be back up if, you, if nobody else wants it. Okay. I can be primary unless somebody else wants it. Okay. Um, Parks and Rec, um, Duncan and Nisad. I'd like to take uh, Parks and Rec primary. If somebody on it. Yeah, I can take back up on that. Okay. Uh, planning and zoning was Christensen and you said? I will miss Amy if I want to keep that one, so I'm, I would like to keep that one because it's fun working with Amy twice a month. I'm glad to have someone else do another twice a month meeting. Uh, Chris, still good for alternate yeah, on yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, police and fire was Pike and Mosher. I'll, I'll keep that one. Okay. Okay, I'll keep second. Uh, ports and harbors was Yasad. Yeah, I'd like to kind of keep my ports. I think by default. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, sustainability commission was Mosher and Christensen. I can do first again. Uh, no, I'm just trying to just show them back up and something else was it. Okay, um, you got six, maybe I could do that. For sustainability, you'd like to be uh, back up? Backing up to the port's harbor. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. alternate. I could do that, alternate for that, because that's the same time as hysterical preservation meetings. <laughs> and no summer meetings, so, for ports and harbors. Uh, so, and 
and Tor, you're good on secondary for sustainability. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Uh, tourism task force. Do you want to stay primary? Do you want to go back up? Yours. It's up to you. I can. I can do whatever. That could be whatever is the Jerry Lengate one next. Um, since they moved time from what was 5 p.m. to now 5.30, that I'm going to get a half an hour to get out before I go to the start reservation. So if someone wants to jump in to tree landscape, then I'd be better positioned for <laughs> tourism task force. Okay. Staying primary. Okay. Yeah, we'll or make sure story. that someone else gets on that story, one. Right? Um, so, I think like previously, just you guys are kind of both primary and we're kind of amongst yourselves. Yeah, we've yeah. almost both been yeah. going there. Exactly. Yeah. So, we're at that. So, we're more of a co liaison. Yeah. I think that's great it's a, because it is a new one um, and we really need those guys to do some really good work in a quick amount of time. So, I appreciate both being there. Yeah. Um, tree and landscape, that one is completely open. Is anyone available the second Wednesday at 5 30? Um, I can also fill in on tree and landscape for okay. primary. Um, I'll do secondary. Perfect. Thank you both. Um, the next two, CETA and STA. Um, I, I can give up CETA if someone else wants that. STA, uh, I believe, is very important to have uh, the mayor as the uh, liaison to that role. So, do you want to continue on CETA? Or do you not? It, if you'd like to, um, I've been to not as many meetings as I could be. I can do it. Okay. Um, and I'll be a, a backup for sure. CETA. That was it. Yeah, it, it, summer meetings are hard for me on uh, noons, but in the winter I'm much more available. So, um, SDA, like I said, I'd really prefer to keep that one. I believe the mayor should uh, be the liaison to Secretary of Alaska. And then school board right now is Mosier and Pike. I can, I can do that. Unless somebody else wants it. Does somebody want it? I'll, I'll back him up on that. Uh, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, that actually went really, really um, smooth and easy. I thank everybody for volunteering additional time out of, uh, out of your busy evenings. Can I just do a round of Yes, please. <laughs> please. Um, so if you hear your name where you shouldn't have had it, let's hear it now. All right. So for GPIP, I have Chris and Tor. Uh, for health needs, I have JJ and Kevin. Uh, for historic preservation, I have JJ and Scott. Uh, investment committee, Tor and Stephen. Uh, library, Scott. Uh, LEPC, um, Kevin and Tor. Uh, Parks and Rec, Kevin and Chris. Planning, uh, Tor and Chris. Police and Fire, Tim and Kevin. Uh, let's see, Port and Harbors, Chris and Scott. Sustainability, Kevin and Tor. Tourism, uh, JJ and Chris. Uh, Tree and Landscape, Scott and Tim. And then for CETA, Tor and Stephen. And let's see, STA, Stephen and School Board, Kevin and Tim. Okay. Uh, so the only one we don't have an alternate is library. Um, if anyone would like to volunteer as alternate for library, if not, we can uh, send out a, a group email um, if the uh, primary is unavailable. Yeah, I can't do that. I, I can do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, that's primary and alternate. And as well, if the alternate can't, um, let Sarah know and she can send out an email to all of us to let us know that um, there is a role that needs to be filled. Okay, uh, we did that. That'll bring us uh, this evening to persons to be heard. This is public participation for any item on or off tonight's agenda, not to exceed three minutes. Good evening, uh, Richard Lee. Uh, I found the uh, discussion very interesting concerning the uh, lease uh, and sale. Uh, what I'm here to say is that the discussion was just about the utility of the building. We all know what the utility of the building is. And you know what? You should have known in 2021 what the utility of the building was. 
And the real question here, and I'm going to bring up some of my surgical training, you have NNN, morbidity and mortality, when you talk about a case that doesn't go well. In Harvard, they have those as uh, business case studies, and most of the studies are for businesses that don't go well. My question is, at the time of 2021, um, did the assembly have in their power to eliminate the aspect of the um, by um, portion uh, of that lease? And to me, that's a yes or no question, and that's a legal question. You have to understand that SEAC formed just the week before, SEAC Logistics formed just the week before the uh, turnover of the lease. That's number one. You can check it with uh, Alaska Corporations. The other thing is, is that SEAC came out of the bankruptcy of Northland Seafood. So you're not talking a regular thing. And you have to understand that is of interest is that, so that was 7, uh, 14, uh, 21, uh, but the bottom, and, that, and then it was a, assessed at 550. In uh, 2009, it was assessed at uh, 450. I mean, you know, what gives here, you're talking about a million dollar difference, forget inflation, forget anything else. So then, three months later, after the transfer, SEAC uh, exercises his right to purchase. Because in essence, the only, that was in March, the only um, value of this was the sublease for salmon shares. But six months after the, the sublease was given, um, on June 6th, um, salmon shares disappeared. So now the, the overall values of these things are nothing. And I think that, that SEAC is now not SEAC Logistics, but SEAC Partners. And they're out of Seattle, and uh, they skedaddled. And it's just unbelievable that then, in a very short time period, so now they want to sell it. And just like we could have done with uh, other properties in Sitka, where people really wanted them. For example, Sitka Community Hospital, why didn't he get the assessor for Sitka Community Hospital, who in my belief lowballed it? And it's, it's just incredible. So I want you to do an M&M &M and tell me what the legal issues are and put them in writing, <laughs> not just a, not a verbal. And I want to see what happened. You need to look back to the past to understand the future. Anyone else this evening for persons to be heard? Good evening, my name is Austin Cranford. Um, to pick you up, uh, piggyback off what Dr. Wood said, I am still skeptical even with the transformer and the water heater that there's a million dollar difference. Just looking at even the most expensive transformers, you're looking at maybe half a million, um, yeah. Half a million dollars for an extremely like in, uh, city industrial transformer, which I'm not sure what transformer specifically was put down there. Um, but yeah, I guess whoever assessed that building back in 2014, uh, maybe some of the homeowners should reach out to them. Uh, that might be interesting. Um, yeah, thank you. Kent Mark down here. I wanted to speak to the assembly decision last meeting regarding the Department of Energy's offer for um, a grant that would help the electric department and some items that are on their, their project list. And uh, I the, the issue that came up, that, or the topic that came up, it came up really quickly and it seemed like they, both the electric department and CORD hadn't had a lot of time to prepare uh, a statement to the assembly to, under, to explain what was going on. And um, it, 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 was, it felt to me like a very rushed decision that wasn't well understood and we might have really passed up an opportunity that we, in, an afterthought would make a different decision. And I, and I hope that there may be an opportunity to revisit that decision 
with better understanding of the costs and benefits and and regardless of the decision at that point, I think we need to, or it would be desirable to revisit that decision if, if the Department of Energy would maintain that uh, offer. Thank you. Anyone else for persons to be heard on or off tonight's agenda? Can you hear me? Okay. <clears throat> My name is Kim Elliott, and um, it's rather entertaining. Earlier tonight, I was listening to a. I tried to find you on TV, and I can't anymore. And so I had to listen to ra uh, Raven Radio. Not that I have anything against Raven Radio, but I like to see the faces of people when they're testifying. Apparently, you have to be a computer tech to be able to do it. So that's one of my <laughs> one, one of my points. Um, the other is, as far as the haul out goes, I think it's extremely important. Uh, and I kind of understand some of uh, Tor's comments and some of the others, but as a family of at least five boats, I know that it'd be really nice to have one here as soon as possible. I just think that it's a little bit expensive, but we all have to pay for what we want. Um, other than that, uh, I think that you should consider when you're trying to find people for committees or lay eyes on to committees, you might look at past committee serving members or past assembly members that might be interested in um, helping you. They might have a little bit more history. I was on the Hart Port and Harbor Commission after I was Harbor Administrative Assistant for 14 years. And I can't volunteer for much these days, but I would something to help the place that I live in and particularly the things that I really care about. So um, those are my main ones for now. <laughs> I think that if, as far as the tourism committee and tourism issues, I will probably come to speak to those when you guys have to deal with them again. But I live in a nightmare place and everybody tells me my house is worth but all kinds of money and I'm saying, okay, I'm thinking about moving to Petersburg or Wrangell. <laughs> Just saying that, you know, real world is, is that um, that's one thing I hope that we look at slowing down somehow, whether it's spacing the ships out more or whatever, but I think it can be done and not lose our revenue. So I don't think I have any time to talk much more, but if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you. This isn't the opportunity for a back and forth conversation, but uh, the meeting's about to be over. If we have questions, we'll be sure. No, I know. Talking. I just wanted you to. Um, uh, I had that Eric Jordan talk thing where he came down in his rain, rain, or his out of the hot tub in a cow. I've done almost the same thing. No, I don't have my jammies on this time. But <laughs> I can't say that I haven't done it before because I live about. A block away, so you know. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And yeah, I know you guys have all heard from me before. Tor, I think that you're. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. No, just a personal note to a, fa a former you. family I'm member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for persons to be heard this evening? That'll bring us to reports. Um, uh, just one thing uh, this evening, I just want to thank the community um, for uh, passing proposition number two um, by a fairly wide margin um, that dedicates 1% uh, seasonal sales tax to um, our school buildings uh, for maintenance uh, and repairs and re re remodels. Um, our schools have been aging for quite some time. Uh, I know that I've sat here and stressed the need for a fiscal plan for our school buildings because we have exactly zero dollars saved up right now um, for a massive looming debt that's going to about to be on our heads. So um, I appreciate the town um, in their forethought looking forward to the future 
um, to have uh, some great buildings when the time comes. And that uh, will also allow um, an ease on the general fund. Um, when $600,000 worth of heat pumps come up, that doesn't have to come out of the general fund anymore. So uh, a sincere thank you to a community which uh, normally overwhelmingly rejects uh, tax increases on ourselves. Um, I, I sincere thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, John. No report, Mayor. Brian? No report. Liaison representatives. Report. I don't usually talk about PNC meetings just because it's fairly, I don't know call it routine, but it's not <clears throat> going to affect us usually. But I do want to comment on that the last few meetings I've been at that, and I've said this before, but they take a huge amount of work off our shoulders. And they deal, the last one there was, it was fairly contentious, and as anybody who's been up here for me at a time knows, this oftentimes we get those lose-lose votes, and they deal with them every time, where they've got, and they deal with neighbors being mad at each other, and they do it nicely and politely, and they, they just do a nice job. And so I don't really want to talk about the actual issues they talked about, but just to, to sh a shout out to them that they do good work, and we are incredibly lucky to have them. And that made me think about, of course, going back, and it's probably why I'm happy to be your liaison, because they're good people, and they, do, they say they do a lot of work for us. So. Well, thank you. Um, as a liaison representative, I, I also didn't mention STA, um, if anyone's interested, is going to be meeting on the 17th this month. Um, normally, their meeting would be on the 18th, um, but due to the Alaska Day uh, holiday or Reconciliation Day, um, that uh, they will be meeting on the 17th. Any other liaison representatives? Uh, Sarah? All right, well, first I wanted to thank our election team uh, this year. They did a phenomenal job, and I am really appreciative for um, the long hours and the um, hard work that they uh, did for us, so thank you. Um, I have a long list of vacancies for boards and commissions, uh, the Animal Hearing Board, Health Needs and Human Services, Historic Preservation, uh, Investment Committee, Local Emergency Planning, Parks and Rec, Port and Harbors, Police and Fire, Actually, we don't have one for um, Port and Harbors um, after tonight's appointment. Uh, police and fire, and then uh, tree and landscape. So if folks in the community are interested, they can stop by and we'll get them set up <coughs> with the application. Great, thank you. Uh, any other reports this evening? Uh, Kevin and then Scott. Uh, yeah, I just want to uh, Agree with you, Ev, uh, and say thank you to the public for voting yes uh, on, in this case, uh, both Prop 1 and 2. Um, uh, just shows a lot of strong support for the schools, uh, and I want to say schools, I mean our children, which are our future. Uh, and people have chosen to invest in that, and I want to thank everyone in town. Um, really appreciate that. Scott? I just need to express myself. Um, as to the importance of getting rid of the hopelessness of the Sitka Village when people come into town, driving down through my neighborhood, and I'm on here right now because I believe I've got insight that can get rid of the hopelessness that everybody just keeps driving by, particularly the federally created domain that like, really is called Kirkman Way, that were federally built houses that weren't built to any standard of town that now are past the 30-year mortgage and then now are paying borough taxes. The process failed the Sitka Village when the, the correction from bringing Marine Street power to the hospital was going to correct Kirkman Way, make the drainage workable, restore the inferior transformers on Catlian that have been hamstringing business down there for decades. And also the sidewalk. There's points that I'm going to be talking with Brian about the sidewalk that it doesn't make sense to make pedestrians walk in the street when the law that protects the administrator could still protect the administrator by moving the concrete right up on the clan houses. And the monuments that border, that mark 
the, the sidewalk is belongs to Clinkett people, and uh, that's why I'm on here. It gets emotional for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other, any further other reports this evening? Uh, seeing none, that would bring us to adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, thank you everyone for your time and your journey.